that a baby has when they are discovering the world around them. So I, I welcome us to take this energy into the services and into the day and into the new year. And again, this was developed based on um, the Brain Dance by Anne Green Gilbert. So if this was interesting to you, you can look her up. And I'll pass it back to Misha. Thank you. Thanks so much, Avia. The Birkota Shachar in the morning, we, we deal with our bodies a lot. I'll speak some, uh, I'll speak some of them kind of half Hebrew, half English. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, who made me in this body. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, who opens my eyes. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, who clothes naked bodies. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, who loosens tight limbs. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, who makes the bent over straight. If you have a talit, by the way, do you all have the link to the um, the link to the uh, um, virtual machzor? This will come in handy. Um, if you don't, Jonathan, could you send them the link? You got that somewhere? Um, it's pretty. It's pretty simple. Uh, here, actually, I have it. If you don't. Um, let me just make sure you guys. He's, he's doing it, Misha. Oh, he's got it. Oh, thank you. So, uh, <clears throat> thank you. If you go to page 16 in the virtual machzor, then you'll find the, the blessing for the talit. If you don't have an actual talit, you can put a shawl, you can pretend you're putting on a shawl. Uh, it's just, it's nice, you know, some, some kind of garment to say, um, we're switching gears here. And you can put it over you. Say the, say the blessing with me if you can. Um, and now I'd like to invite Ricky Long to read us one of the psalms that we read on uh, both Shabbat morning and Rosh Hashanah morning, Psalm 19, one of the favorites. Um, it is in your virtual machzo on page 17. Uh, yeah, we can't hear. We can't hear Ricky. Hold on. Uh, I unmuted. There you go. Ricky, we can't hear you again. Okay. The heaven, Psalm nineteen. Can you hear me now? Yes. Good. Okay. We hear you perfectly. Thank you. The heavens express your fire. The night sky is the work of your hands. Day after day is your spoken language. Night after night, your perfect knowing. There is no speech. There are no words. Their voice falls silent. Yet the music plays everywhere. To the end of the earth, its clear notes float out. To the ends of the world, the words pronounce become a tabernacle for the sun that comes out like a bridegroom from his chamber, a robust runner to run his day's course. To the end of the heavens he races and back again he returns. And there is nothing hidden from his heat. Your pattern is perfection. It quiets the soul that knows it and its eloquent 
expression makes everything clear so that even the simple are wise. Your ways are upright, making the heart glad. Your distances are clear, washing out the eyes. Your awesomeness is pure and endures constantly. What you require is just, for it is nothing but the truth. And it is more durable than the finest gold, sweeter than the drippings of the honeycomb. Her serves you as inspired, and in following you, finds reward. Who is free from all error? You take hold of it and turn it right. And where there is confusion, let me not become entangled. And I will be blameless, clear of any misdirection. May these words of my mouth and these meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, my rock, my redeemer. Thank you, Ricky. We're gonna, uh, we got a, we got a, a more traditional psalm, and now I want to go to a, uh, maybe the least traditional psalm that you'll hear in a while. Um, uh, on, on Rosh Hashanah, there's this phrase that keeps recurring, Tole Eretz al Blima, God hangs the earth from nothingness, from from blima in Hebrew means without what? Without anything. That's what we're hanging on here. We're hanging on, we're hanging off of very um, tenuous strings. And um, there is an art, uh, an art movement that expresses that to my mind very, very beautifully. And that's the Dada movement, um, which you may know of. It, uh, it came as a response to World War I, where everything seemed um, just like that. So um, my teacher uh, and friend Joni Higrizosike is going to introduce it and then her brother Bobby, one of my very favorite actors in the world, is going to perform the psalm manifesto of the ceremonious. Joni, please. Yeah. Hello. Hi, everybody. I just want to introduce my beautiful mother, Gloria, or our beautiful mother, Gloria, who came to the service today. Thank you, Mom. Okay, go away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, uh, a brief introduction to this uh, poem which actually Bobby and I are going to perform. The Dadaists grab the zeitgeist of World War I and combining traditions from all over the globe built their altar from which to decry the madness of global conflict. The ancient Israelites took from all the places they dwelled in snippets of this belief and that until they formed the first monotheistic religion. There is pomp and circumstance, there is ritual, there are traditions, there is transformation, there is revelation, there is revolution. Call the universal combinations that created our world, whatever name, Elohim, Allah, the holiest of holies, the big kahuna. Such a force is nameless, fantastic, incomprehensible. We, we hold the hollow bladder in our hands and, and catch the burning oakum with our, our ears. ears. We, we hold the hollow bladder in our hands. We hold the whole hollow bladder in our hands. We hold the hollow bladder in our hands. Catch the oakum with our ears. We are ceremonious and melancholy. We ancient priests. In the valley, in the valley, in the, in valley. the valley, they are beating the great kettle drum. The vermilion tide is rising. The porcelain stars are falling down. I away, I away, I away, I away. I away. We are so ceremonious and serious in this hour. 
We have forgotten minor things. We tore the hyacinths from our heads. We clapped the earth out of our bellies. This, this means, means we, we are very ceremonious. Done. Have we ever had more reason to act madder, lovelier, insaner, or more ceremonious? Have we ever had more reason for blowing red hot smoke out of our noses or being prouder? We killed a quarter of a century. We killed several centuries for the sake of what is to come. You can call it what you like. Surgery. Kleptomania. Calligraphy. For all we can say is we, we are. are. We have worked some revolution, reaction, extra, extra. We are. We are Dada, first and foremost. First and foremost. Okay. Whose fantasticness is incomprehensible. Yeah, let's give him some hands. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. For Thank you. Thank you, all three of you. Thank you, Joni. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, Mom. Um, um, yes. That's a song. What do you What do you guys think? Is that Does that qualify as a song? A song of praise? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, um, I just before before we continue, uh, can, can you can hear it? They're, they're asking who you are. Um, I just want you to say hi to Erica. This is Erica, my wife. When I say Erica, that's who I mean. Hi. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, um, uh, we turn now to uh, um, Ellen. Did you record Kola Neshama? Okay, great. So Jonathan, we can we can hear Ellen's recording of Kola Neshama, a new shul tradition that Ellen that Ellen has been singing for many years. Ellen, you want to say anything about this before we before we put it on? No, let's <laughs> okay. just roll it. Let's roll. Misha, yeah, we're, we have a little glitch here. We don't have the recording that oh. was with all the video equipment for last night, and we don't uh -oh. we don't have that with us today. So, Ellen, you want me to get, you want me to go wing it? Well, there we go. Let's... Let me go get a drum. Uh, <laughs> thank you, guys. Okay. <clears throat> here, why don't we, why don't we get the drum ready? Okay, uh, I'll teach you a very simple Middle Eastern beat, which might come in handy. Okay, boom. Pop. One thing we could do, sorry, one thing we could do, and you guys can use this uh, throughout all of the high holidays when you're on Zoom, is dr drumming on your body. I think, it, I think it's a nice way to kind of bring us into it. Yeah? So you can go. You can drum on any part of your body. Okay, I'm back. All right. Totally unwarmed up. This is gonna come from uh, come from another place. Okay. Hallelujah, 
all kinds of claps on the chat. Ah, good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Ellen. Um, uh, I asked Jim to give us a few words about the connection between the body and learning. And the one thing I mentioned to him this morning was um, what Mirandi said. Those of you who saw the service last night um, or were with us, Mirandi was out in California fighting the wildfires. And one thing she said, which was, um, which stayed with me, was that uh, she found that when she was there around her house in the forest and hills around her house in the wildfires, she didn't realize that she actually remembered the paths that go through and like how to move through places and what, how one spot leads to another. But it turns out she did because that stuff had been learnt in her body. So I mentioned this to, uh, to Jim this morning and I just thought I'd, I'd, I'd bring us all in touch with that moment with Mirandi last night and invite Jim Ponette to give us a few words. Thanks, Misha. I didn't know you were going to do this, but I'm grateful for the opportunity to talk to everybody uh, so I can hear myself think in your presence. Um, first of all, Avia started us off so magnificently, um, attuning to the body. And Ellen, oh my God, Ellen, what, I mean, thank God the technology didn't work so that we had Ellen uh, singing from her body, her whole body. And of course, you drumming teaching us our body is a drum. I wrote to you this morning when we conversed about this in text um, that William James understood this truth in a deep way and I had to go back to James afterwards and start listening to him in a way that I hadn't been able to hear him before. Human consciousness is, he says, like a little rivulet running through a massive meadow. The meadow is so lush and that's our full consciousness that's carried in our skin, in our organs, in every follicle of hair. But we don't attend to it consciously, so to speak, but it's there impacting us, says James, as if we are thinking with full awareness of it. So what we call the unconscious is possibly the body, but the body is alive. And it is more alive than we understand and more mysterious than we can get. It is awesome. So James says, people think, you know, uh, instincts and emotions, are, they come from God. And he says, no, 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 it's the nervous system. But the nervous system is as wondrous as anything there ever was. So there's something in the sheer mystery of our own unique organic physicality, its ability to get sick its ability to heal, its ability to dance, its ability to dream. So that when Avia had us 
expand, looking up and, and, and feeling how our ears go so far beyond the immediate environment we're in. And even light shoots out of our fingers and how our heads grow. So, you know, the image of Jacob's angels going up and down the ladder is, is inside, as, you know, as yogis know and kundalini yoga knows, it's there. There's something eternal and something vast in us. And we shrink it down to this little rivulet in a meadow called our day-to-day -day consciousness, called ego consciousness. And, and so we are a vast superior reality to anything we can imagine at the same time that we are this small, functioning, temporary, anguish-filled person caught up in the local dramas of politics and, and, uh, and, and global issues. But we are larger than all of that. We come out of that mystery and don't lose it. It's in our bodies. So those are thoughts that I've never spoken before. Uh, and I felt them coming through as you did Birchot HaShachar, the morning blessings, Reb Misha. I never heard them the way you enacted them, each of them, when he said, source of blessing who opens our eyes. And Misha, Misha knows how to do eyes. He learned it from the great Indian uh, actors. It, but each part of his body came alive as he talked about the blessing of the pieces of the body and the life flowing through it. So, yes, bodily wisdom. Is there any other kind of wisdom? James said, here I stop. James said, <laughs> William James, not James Ponet. William James <laughs> said, he observed that uh, once he saw what must have been, he, he thought paint being poured out of a can into, a, uh, in, into something that would contain it, a red paint that would be used to, to do some painting. Um, but he almost passed out when he saw it. Only later did he realize it had not been paint, it had been blood. The body knew what the mind didn't know, the conscious mind didn't know. The, the sense to which our emotions are ahead of us, something deeper guides us. It's there that that presence that we're yearning for is available, but we bury it until it forces itself out or until we let it out. Shana Tova. Thank you. Toda Ba, Rabbi. Okay, all right. Enough, uh, I think enough intro, and now let's try some, let's try some prayer. Um, I invite you all to please rise for the Baruch Yonatan's going to lead us. We can all sit down and you can turn to page 20 in your, in your virtual machzor for Yotzer Or.
sorry, uh, page uh, 22. Page 22. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, yotzer or, uvore choshech, ose shalom, uvore et akol. Let's speak the translation together. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, former of light, creator of darkness, maker of peace, and creator of all things. We can turn to the next page, page 23, uh, and you can read it, you can read it silently until we get to the Shema on page 24. And let's say the Shema together. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Adonai Elohecha, Bechol Evavcha, Ubechol Nafshecha, Ubechol Meodecha, Vehayu Advarim Aele, Asher Anochim et Savecha, Hayom Alevavecha, Veshinantam Levanecha, Vedibarta, Baham, Veshivtecha, Veveitecha, Ublechtecha, Vaderecha, ובשוך בך ובקומך, וקשרתם לאות על ידיך, והיו לתותפות בין עיניך, וכתבתם על מזוזות ביתך ובישריך. We continue to read silently. And we move on to page 25. And we read the top paragraph. Vayomer Adonai el Moshe lemor, daber al bnei Yisrael, ve'amart alem, ve'asu lehem tzitzit al kanfei bigdeem ledorotaham, ve'natnu al tzitzit akanaf betil tchelet, ve'alachem letzitzit, u'item oto. Uzchartem et kol mitzvot Adonai ve'asitem otaham, ve'lo taturu acharei levabchem, ve'acharei lechem, asher tem zonim achareihem. למען תזכרו, ועשיתם את כל מצוותיי, והייתם קדושים לאלוהיכם. אני, אדוני אלוהיכם, אשר הוצאתי אתכם מארץ מצרים להיות לכם לאלוהים. אני, אדוני אלוהיכם, אדוני אלוהיכם אמת. אדוני, your God is truth. We're going to take a, a kind of detour from the traditional. What, what normally comes here is the Micha Mocha followed by the Amidah, but we're going we're gonna to take, uh, take a little detour here. Um, and we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to go straight into the Torah service. We're going to hear Amy uh, chant us the Torah reading for today. And then uh, we're going to talk for a moment also about the Haftarah for today. We're not going to hear the Haftarah, we're just going to kind of talk about it for a second, um, because, the, because both the Torah portion and the Haftarah in a way deal with the body and with how one, uh, what one does with their body in prayer. And so we're going to kind of try and learn from that and then come back and try and do the Amidah prayer, which the rabbis really based off of Chana's prayer. Um, so we're, get, we're going to try and do the Amidah after we've kind of talked about it a little bit. Make sense? 
Wonderful. So um, you may have noticed some new people in the room. Let me introduce you before we take out the Torah. Here's Ezzy. Ezzy, say hi. Hi. Behind him there is Matan. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> um, those are two of the three. It looks like the third little guy, Manu Emanuel, um, he... Um, also known as Batman, and he seems to be off uh, in some other location saving somebody. Um, so maybe we'll catch him. We'll catch him in a bit. Um, we're going to continue on that same page. And behind me here, that's what we're going to call our Ark or Arkish. Um, and Matai, uh, uh, will you go kind of uh, undo that? Please rise. And we're gonna take out the Torah, and we're gonna put it in Matan's hands. Hold it. There you go. Yeah. We're gonna have a bar mitzvah here. Matan's bar mitzvah is coming up in just a, in, in in about a year. So here he is. En kamocha b'Elohim Adonai ve'en kemasecha malchutecha malchut kol alamim u'memshaltecha v'chol dor v'dor Adonai melech Adonai malach Adonai mloch le'olam v'ed Adonai oz le'amo yiten Adonai yevarech et amo b'shalom. Ah, <laughs> We're in the fourth paragraph from the top on page 25. <laughs> Sorry, my voice is cracking as I'm proud of the child. Ki-mitziyon-te-tze-toah-hu-devar-adonai-mi-yerushalayim-baruch-shenatan-toah-toah-toah-toah-toah-toah-toah-toah-toah-toah-toah-toah-toah-toah-toah-toah-toah-toah
And now you guys can please please mute yourselves again. I'm, I'm going to sing the final blessing. That was awesome. Actually, that worked way better than expected. Good idea, Ellen. Um, and and then Jonathan is going to sing a song. Now, uh, um, before before we do this, we can't really take the Torah around you guys, but um, uh, but what we can do is this. Um, Avia and I had discussed that um, that the thing to do here with our bodies, since we're talking about the bodies, is to think of your body as the Torah. Yeah, the body. Our bodies are our temple. Our bodies are our teachings. Our bodies are our bodies are everything we have. That's that's it, it's it's through this vessel that we can actually learn anything. So, um, uh, so what we're going to do is I, I'm going to I'm going to lead us in the Gadlu, the last blessing, and then I'm going to invite you all to stand up and take your body, your Torah, around for a little walk, stretch around, and come back and sit down for the Torah reading. All right, here we go. Gadlu la donaiti uner omem Hashem o yachdav. Yai na na yai na na yai na 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 yai 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 na na
Can you tell us your uh, your 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 parents' names so that we can yes. invite you properly? My mother's name was Sima. Sima. Yes, and my father's name was Moshe. Sima and Moshe, and your Hebrew name? My Hebrew name is Rivka. Ta'amod Rivka bat Sima and Moshe. Did you say? Yes. Bat Sima and Moshe Rishona. Now, along with uh, with Rivka bat Sima and Moshe, I'd like to invite anybody here um, who thinks that they might be ready. In some way, you guys know Heschel's statement about praying with my feet. You guys know about this? After Heschel marched with Dr. King, they asked him about it, and he said, I was praying with my feet. Yeah? Whoever here is ready to pray with their feet, you guys uh, consider yourselves um, part of Renee's team. All right? And and, and stand up, and you, you, can, you can say the blessings on page 112. Okay. I start? Yes, yes, please. Baruch Adonai אשר בחר בנו מכל העמים, ונתן לנו את תורתו, ברוך אתה אדוני, נותן התורה. אמן. ותרס הרע את בן הדר המצרית, אשר ילדה לאברהם מצחק. ותאמר לאברהם, תראה שמה הזופי אל בינה, כי לא הוא ירש בין האמה הזאת, אם בני, אם יצחק. וירע הדבר מאוד בימי אברהם, על אודות בנו. ויאמר אלוהים אל אברהם, אל ירע בעיניך על הנער ועל אמתך, כל אשר תאמר אליך, שרה שמה בקולה, כי ביצחק יקרא לך זרה. וגם את בן העמה לגוי אשימנו, כי זרעך הוא. Beautiful, thank you, Amy. Uh, Renee and all of the prayers with their feet, um, please, the, the blessing after. ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, אשר נתן לנו תורת אמת, וחי עולם נטע בתוכנו. ברוך אתה אדוני, נותן התורה. אמן. אמן. יישר כוח. Um, between these next two aliyahs, we're going to have a prayer for healing. Uh, Yonatan's going to sing for us the prayer for healing. I know many people, some in our community, and lots of people around us are in great need of healing right now, um, physical and emotional. Misha Berach, Bevakasha. May the source of strength who bless the ones before us help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing and let us say amen. מי שברך עם אותנו, 
מקור הברכה לאבותינו. Bless those in need of healing with refuah shlema. The renewal of body, the renewal of spirit. And let us say Amen. Amen. May we all find healing. Before the second Ali, I just want to, uh, I don't know if you guys could see, but I was, what I'm trying to do here is to show with my camera where we are reading in the Torah, where, where Amy is reading in the Torah. So uh, you can also look at, you can also look at my box and we have a very special Yad here. This is actually the first time we're using it. This is an antique Yad um, that was a gift from his daughters to Erica's grandfather, Papa. Um, not that long, not that long. Sorry, I'm getting email again. Um, um, uh, one of those daughters, at least one, is here with us, uh, Diane and Robbie, my parents-in-law. Um, so uh, it's, a, it's an antique Yad from Russia, and uh, I'm excited to use it for the first time. And we're going to, I hope we can actually find the spot and do it right this time. For the second Aliyah, I'd like to first invite Nancy Gershom. And along with Nancy, I'm going to invite, um, well, the, 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 the mind or the brain is possibly, I don't know if the mind is exactly a physical part of our body, but it's definitely part of us. Um, and I, I want to invite anybody who might need a lift for their mind these days. Yeah, if you need some kind of lift for the mind, um, the mind, the brain, if you're feeling a bit tired up there, that's your Aliyah. Um, Please, please rise. Um, Nancy, could you give me your, your Hebrew name and your parents' names? Yes. Uh, my Hebrew name is Naomi Sharon. And uh, my mother's name was Evelyn. And my father's name was Walter. Ta'amod Naomi Sharon. But Evelyn Walter Shnia. Whenever you're ready. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Leolam Vaed. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam. Asher Vashabanu Mikol Hamim Vanatan Lanu Et Torato. Baruch Adonai Noteinu HaTora. Amen. Amen. Bayash Kehim Abraham Babo Oker Vayikach Lechem Vachem Ad Mahayim Vayitain El Hagar Saham Al Shichma Viet Hayelet Vayishal cheha, vatelech vateta, vmibar ber shava. Vayichlu hamayim min hachemet, vatashlech et hayelet, tachat achad hasichim. Vatelech vateshev laha mineged. Harcheich kim tacha vehe keshet ki amra el ere bemot ha yeled vateshev mi neged vatisa et kola vatev. Yes, please. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. 
Go ahead, Nancy. We're listening. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher natan lanu Torah demet Vachi olam natan baduchenu Baruch atah Adonai Noten haTorah Amen. Before we uh, before we uh, go on to Yashukoch, uh, before we go on to the third Aliyah, we're going to do the Birkat Kohanim, the priestly blessing. This is a blessing for all of us. Do we have any any Kohanim here on the call? Anybody anybody a Kohen? This is Greg Shat, and I am. Okay, Greg, um, would you, um, uh, would you, you could you um, either maybe maybe just repeat after me? I'll say the words, and you can repeat after me unless you know them already. I do not. Okay, perfect. Um, so, uh, do you know how to do the Spock hand like the like Kwanim? There we go. Okay, we'll do we'll do we'll do that. And if there are any other koanim on the call, uh, please grace us with those with those uh, hands. I see I see Avia doing it. Um, yeah, Spock hands. It's a very a very important uh, priestly trick. There we go. Suzanne's got it. Um, um, okay, you, here here we go. Ready? Yevarechecha Adonai veishmerecha. Yevarechecha. Adonai, Shemecha. May the Eternal bless you and protect you. May the Eternal bless you and protect you. Yael Adonai. Yael Adonai. Benavelecha. Benavelecha. Vichuneka. Vichuneka. May mercy, kindness, and love. Make mercy, kindness, and love. Light your way. Light your way. Isa Adonai, Isa Adonai, Panav Elecha, Panav Elecha, Veyasem Lecha Shalom. Veyasem, again please. Veyasem, Veyasem, Lecha, Lecha, Shalom. Shalom. May peace guide you through life. May peace guide you through life. And fill you with its presence. And fill you with its presence. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We got a real priestly blessing. Who knew? Um, for the third and final aliyah, uh, I'd like to invite Linda Khan. She's going to lead us. And along with Linda, I'd like to invite any of you whose heart might need a lift. Yeah. If your heart needs a lift right now, this is your aliyah, and I invite you to please rise and ch and uh, uh, chant the blessing along with along with Linda. Um, Linda, your your um, your parents' names? Stephen and Patricia. And do you have a Hebrew name? Miriam. Miriam, but Stephen and Patricia. Ta'amod Miriam, but Stephen and Patricia. Achaona Baruch et Adonai HaMevorach Baruch Adonai HaMevorach Le'olam Va'ed Baruch Adonai HaMevorach Le'olam Va'ed Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bahar Banu Mikol HaAmin Benatan Lanu Lam Et Torato Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah. Amen. Vayishma, Vayishma ha Elohim et kol hanar. Vayikra ha Malach Elohim el hagar min hashamayim. Vayomer la malach agar al tihiri ki shamah Elohim el kol hanar biasher kusham kumi si et hanar 
Bahaziki at your death, Bo Hile Goi Gadola Simenu Baikach Elohim at a neha, Baterach Beher Maim, Batelach, Bat Malay at Hachem at Maim, Batashach at Hanaar. Vayihi Elohim et hanar vayigdal vayeshe vamibar vayihi rove kasha. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher natan lanu torat emet Bahai Olam Natan Betohenu Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen Yashar Koch, uh, um, whoever wants to unmute and just yell out a Yashar Koch because there's a lot on the chat. Yashar Kochs to everybody. Beautiful people have color. Beautiful. Okay, uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna uh, continue with Shana Tova. That's Elali, my niece. Shana Tova. They're in Israel, um, in Suladata. Um, uh, please rise as we put the Torah back in the Arkish. Vezot a Torah asher samoshe lifne bene Israel ati Adonai beyad Moshe. It's Chaim he Yonatan. Et chaimi la machazikim ba vetom chea meusha derachea darkei noam vecholeti votea shalom hashivenu. Adonai Elecha Venashuva Chadesh Chadesh Yameinu Chadesh Yameinu Kekedem Thank you. Please have a seat. Um, for the next uh, little bit, to, to riff a little bit on um, on what we just read from the Torah, the story of Hagar and Ishmael and Sarah, um, I want to invite Susan Berger, but I, uh, uh, I also want to make sure that uh, you guys have, I think Susan will will be uh, she'll be speaking but she'll also be reading from something that you can find in the virtual machzol um, and it's kind of uh, uh, she's going to read parts and you're going to read parts so you can turn to page 30 on the virtual machzol and just kind of have it ready um, and uh, but uh, um, make sure that you have Susan in your view first Susan Berger please uh, Okay, I'm unmuted, right? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you, Rabbi Misha. And thank you, Amy, for reading the Torah so beautifully, as always. And thank you, my fellow women prophets of Rosh Hashanah Chevruta members. 
um, Sasha Malamed, Antonietta Diaz, Sage Mehta, and our fearless leader, Ilana Ponet. The Chevrutas were a wonderful way to prepare for the holy, High Holy Days. Delving into the passages about these women in the Torah gave us, gave us women of the new shul the opportunity to share our thoughts and experiences in a very special way and inspired me to write the following. Rosh Hashanah, the Rosh, the head of the year, the beginning of the year, hearkening back to the time of the creation of the world. Women's, this together I think, right? Women's wombs are the place of our creation. Sarah, Hagar, and Hannah are the women of Rosh Hashanah. Their stories are about, are about the creation of life and are an important part of what has enabled their progeny, the Jewish people, to survive, as well as the Arab nation. One thing that arose from our Chevruta's engagement with what is said in the Torah about Sarah, Hagar, but most especially Hannah, as we embark on the beginning of 5781 in our time and place, with the beginning of Rabbi Misha's tenure as our spiritual leader, is the importance of the mouth. All our mouths, covered or not, the mouth of all the sensory organs of the Rosh, the head, is the only one necessary for survival. While we derive great pleasure and very important information with our other organs, the eyes, the ears, the nose, the mouth reigns supreme in importance. It is the mouth through which we eat, breathe, speak, kiss, and pray. Hannah's prayers consisted of only her lips moving. However, because of what she was experiencing internally, she was recognized by all as a source of love, sacrifice, and integrity, keeping her promise to God. When the mouth is deceived by an empty promise of sustenance, we are made to feel anger, shame, despair for being suckers. We may come to believe that all promises of sustenance are empty and therefore lose hope and motivation to believe that true sustenance is there, leading us to contribute to our own spiritual and corporeal deaths. Therefore, what is most important for our survival is the opposite of deceit, truth, seeking truth and integrity, and learning the difference between reality and fantasy, though both are completely necessary for our survival and growth and spirit. With seeking truth comes wisdom and a true relationship to the women of Rosh Hashanah, a true relationship with our history, our people, our God, and each other. Sarah, Hagar, and Hannah teach us that without truth and integrity, that connection can be broken and our survival jeopardized. May we begin 5781, seeking truth through our tshuva during the days of all, as well as through our learning together throughout the year, finding our way towards a stronger connection to our history, the people of Israel, Am Yisrael, our God, and the connections within ourselves and to each other. Amen, Kenya Yiratzon. Thank you for that beautiful, beautiful reflection. Thank you. Um, by the way, Susan uh, and the rest of the group has informed me that they plan to continue this Chevruta after Rosh Hashanah, exploring possibly other women in our tradition. So uh, 
uh, keep your ears peeled for that one. There's a few of these learning pods that we started on that we started on route to today, really, um, that are going to continue, and we're gonna we're gonna start a bunch of them. They've been very very special. I can't I can't tell you how what a beautiful way it was for me to meet some of the, some of you guys, and also just to kind of. Uh, you know, bounce ideas back off of each other. It's it's a uh, it's a really beautiful piece of our tradition. Um, so I encourage you all to join us in the chevutas that will um, resume after um, after uh, after Kippur. We'll figure out what's next. Um, I'd like to uh, uh, I, before I, there's two people that that I wanted to invite to say another word about Chana. Um, one is Nicole Fix, who you guys can see there in one of the boxes. Uh, soon to be Rabbi Nicole is uh, um, uh, is a theater person and a uh, writer and uh, and a Rabbi shortly. Um, and Nicole and I had this amazing chevruta um, about the story of Chana over the last couple months and. Uh, um, I think what I should do before I before I uh, uh, before I uh, introduce Nicole and before Nicole Avia will say a word too is uh, is just bring you in on the story of Chana because I'm not sure everybody knows the story. Okay, so um, the story of Chana is the uh, is from the book of Samuel, it's the first book of Samuel, and it's the uh, haftarah for the first day of, of Rosh Hashanah. Uh, it's a it's it starts off kind of kind of straightforward like a lot of biblical tales and like Sarah and uh, uh, she, you know Hannah can't have babies and this is uh, deeply troubling to her and um, she uh, she's uh, she goes to the temple she's distraught at the temple she prays very fervently with all of her body and uh, she prays so much with her body that the high priest thinks something is wrong um, and comes to the conclusion that she's drunk. Yeah. And accuses her of being drunk and says, you can't be drunk in here. Get out of here. And she answers him back very, uh, very eloquently, powerfully, um, uh, with tremendous connection to the to her body and to the truth lying deep within her body and uh and uh once she tells him what's going on he he understands as well and sends her off um with a promise a divine promise that she will get pregnant and she does and she has a baby and um the deal that she had made with god was uh when she was praying was if she gets a male child she will give that child back to God to be a priest for his life, for his entire life. And a few years later, indeed, she does bring her child Samuel back to the temple and he becomes a priest and, uh, and then becomes, you know, the leader of Israel, the leader of Israel for the, for the following uh, years. Now, um, uh, in a way, it sounds like a kind of straightforward biblical story, but when Nicole and I were, were learning it, it had turned into a kind of Black Lives Matter exposition, into a feminist, uh, a powerful feminist statement, um, and definitely a statement about the body. So that led Nicole and me to, to uh, talk about movement, and we ended up, uh, uh, I ended up reaching out to Avia and saying, do you wanna do you wanna uh, work with us on this as a as a um, as a kind of dance play? So Nicole and I have written this play. We just figured out the title yesterday, um, which is "Are My Tears Disturbing You?" That's what we thought would be the title. Um, and uh, and this play is going to be performed um, uh, on Yom Kippur. So it'll be performed, uh, one, one scene from it will be performed at Kol Nidre, um, and the rest of the play is going to be performed the afternoon in the Mincha service. But I wanted to invite Avia to say a couple words, and then to invite Nicole to say another couple words. So uh, Avia, uh, the mic's yours. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Misha, for introducing that. And... Um, also, thank you, Susan, for speaking so eloquently on Hannah and all the other women 
of uh, Rosh Hashanah. So um, yeah, as Misha said, uh, we have been working in close collaboration um, and Misha and Nicole have created a script that um, myself and the director, Michael Posnick, who said a few words last night about space and time, if anybody remembers that. And um, I will also be working with two close collaborators of mine, um, Hallie Chemetsky and Grayson Bradshaw, to develop a danced theatrical performance. Um, and just to say, Hannah, who I find to be hugely inspiring, is fiercely and she fiercely and unapologetically refuses to accept the conditions that have been given her. Um, and she finds the strength within herself to demand better. Um, not unlike our, uh, yeah, our, our dear Jewish Brooklynite feminist who we're all mourning this morning, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, I think we can all find strength from Hannah and from, from RPG. So I'll pass it off now. Thanks. Thank you, Avi, and thank you, thank you for bringing up uh, RBG. I was, I had the same thoughts this morning. She's, she's a Khan. Um, Nick, Nicole, please. Uh, hi, everyone. Shana Tova. Um, Avia, thank you for those insights, and Susan uh, for that beautiful piece. Uh, as Misha was saying, when we were working together uh, to create this adaptation of Hana for Services this year, uh, the first thing uh, he lifted up about Hana is that she's a teacher. And what I am definitely learning being here this morning is that the New Shul is not only a community of learners, but it's a community of teachers. So I'm really just so honored and happy to celebrate this holiday with you. Um, in Susan's beautiful piece, she teaches us that the mouth can be a source of deceit or a source of truth. And the difference very much depends on us. It is through Hannah's silent moving lips that the longings of her heart pour out to God. And I also want to just raise up some of our other senses and our entire body. We know, for example, that hearing is the first sense that we have. And similarly, it's the last one that we lose. And it's with our bodies that we bring into the world creations, whether they are babies or acts of kindness or works of art. And we learn also from these stories about our, our eyes, that just as words can enlighten or deceive, so our eyes can show us lies or they can show us truth. And when we meet Hannah, as Rabbi Mishu told us, she's suffering. We're told that every year the same thing happens. She goes to Shiloh with her family, with her husband, Akana, and his second wife, Panina, and Panina's children. And Panina taunts her mercilessly. And Hana is distraught. And Akhna, her husband, he tries to comfort her, but he, he misses the mark because he can't bear to see Hana in pain. And so he won't validate her suffering. So instead of focusing on Hana, he shifts the point of view to himself and says, but Hana, aren't I, aren't I better than 10 sons? And Hana goes to pray. But the priest there, Eli, as Misha was saying, he, he can't see her. He looks at her, but he doesn't see. Hana is distraught. She's expressive in her body, but silent in her words. And the priest, he doesn't know what to make of it and accuses her of being drunk because Eli's eyes lead him to the wrong conclusion. And perhaps he holds biases that cause him to miss see Hana. But whatever the reason, Ellie's response is surface. He's unable to go deeper and to see in a holistic way 
that allows him to actually perceive the truth. In Hebrew, the word that's used to describe Elia's actions as he watches Hannah is lishmor, to guard, instead of the verb lirot, to see. And we also learn about sight from the story of Sarah and Hagar. Hagar is cast out from Abraham's house. She and her child Ishmael are sent out into the wilderness without enough water to survive, water that is so essential to the body. And Hagar is so distraught that she moves away from Ishmael because she cannot bear to see her son die. And we imagine Hagar, we imagine her pain that she asks God to take her life so that she does not have to see her son die. And Hagar cries. And it, we're told then that God opens Hannah's eyes. Uh, sorry, Hagar's eyes, and Hagar sees a well of water in front of her. But it's not the well that's the miracle, because the well is there all along. It's, it's Hagar's trauma that keeps her from seeing it. Rather, we understand that the miracle is the opening of the eyes. And when Hannah is finally given a voice and we hear her prayer, what is it that she asks of God? She asks, will you see the suffering of your maidservant? Hana, like all of us, wants to be seen. I'd like to close with a blessing. As we enter into this new year, may we all be blessed with the gift of seeing and of being seen. May we act righteously in our seeing and may we be whole in our being seen. And may the eyes of the divine fall favorably on us and seal us for a sweet and good year. And let us say, Amen. Uh, Shabbat Shalom and Tanatava. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. That was beautiful. Thank you so much. And thank you, Avia, for that beautiful introduction. Um, beautiful. Um, okay. <clears throat> now, now we're going to try and pray. Um, so here's what I'm going to, I'm going to offer you guys a couple, a couple different options and you guys can each choose how you want to try and do this. Um, there's the, uh, the Amida is, um, you can find it, um, on page 33 of the uh, of the virtual machzo so you can and it's the next few pages um what is it um sorry i keep losing my spot here um the amidai's 30 33 um 33 4 5 6 yeah, 33 to 36. Um, you, you're welcome to uh, you're welcome to pray with that. Um, if you'd rather, you can just stand. I think the standing is important because that's what that's one of the things we learned from Hannah. Um, we talked about her eyes, her mouth, her heart, but what we didn't talk about is the way the the way the Torah, the Bible describes her standing, and the rabbis and the Talmud go to town on this standing, Nitzivit. She's standing present. And it is for that reason that we stand in that way during the Amidah. The, uh, the, the, the way Jews pray the Amidah, which is our central moment of, of prayer, really, is all based on the way Chana prayed in this story. And so you can read from the traditional prayers or you could just stand and be silent and pray in whatever way you like. Um, we're going to take a few a few minutes for everybody to do this, and then reconvene. Um, and uh, I'll 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 kick us off with the opening blessing. Um, and I invite you all to please rise. And wherever you are. 
turn to face the east, figure out which way is east. Our east is over there. <clears throat> we take three steps back and three steps forward. Adonai shpatai tiftach ufi yagid teilatecha. Adonai, open my lips that my mouth may speak your praise. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Elohei Avoteinu Veimoteinu Elohei Avraham Elohei Yitzchak Elohei Yaakov Elohei Sarah Elohei Rivka Elohei Rachel Elohei Lea Ha'el Agadol Agibor Ve'anora El Elion Gomer Chasadim Tovim Mekone Akol Ve'zokher Chasdei Avot Ve'imot Ve'mevi Goel Ibnei Ibneihem Leman Shmo Be'ahava Zochveinu lechaim melech hafetz b'chaim Vekotveinu besefer hachaim Leman mecha Elohim chaim Melech ozer ומשיה ומגן Baruch ata Adonai Magen Abraham ועזרת שרה Ata gibor לעולם Adonai מחיים את עם התרב ואושיע Mechalken ומחיי <laughs> ומצמיח ישוע ונאמן אתה לחיות מתי. ברוך אתה אדוני מחיה המתי.
עושה שלום במרומה, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל, ועל כל יושבי תבל, ואמרו, אמרו, שלום במרומיו, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל ועל כל יושבי תבל ועם Please have a seat. Um, uh, just a little note to say, uh, with, uh, my, my favorite type of theater is called Kudiyatam, and it's, uh, uh, it's a Sanskrit theater form that's super slow and takes about 60 hours. And so the audience there learns that they can get up and go out or, you know, take a nap or um, have a bite. Um, what I'm saying is, feel free, we still got a little, a little ways to go. Uh, however, what I will say is that uh, we have two very beautiful musical pieces coming up. And I think it's worth your while to stick around. Um, uh, the, one of the classic Rosh Hashanah prayers is called Unetan And um, uh, I, I asked Yonatan to, um, to, I wanted to introduce you guys actually to Yonatan since you've heard him sing a lot, but you, have, you, haven't, you haven't heard him speak much. And so I wanted him to say, say a couple words about this prayer and, uh, and then to perform it in this, uh, uh, well, he can, he can explain where the, this particular uh, melody is from. Bevakasha, Yonatan. Hi, everybody. Shana Tova again. It's great to be here with you. Um, so Misha asked that I'll present Unetane Tokef. The piyut was written around the 11th century, I think around Egypt, uh, by uh, Rabbi Amnon of Mintz. Uh, the story says that he died a horrible death when he refused to convert to, to be Catholic. Um, uh, and that's, yeah, that's where the words are. And the, the, the music that I'm going to use today was written in Kibbutz Beta Shita. It's a, it's a kibbutz in Israel, a secular community that suffered greatly in the Yom Kippur War. It, that's the war that broke in Israel in 1973. Um, and it's, I think it's an in interesting combination. I, I also grew up secular in Israel, um, in Jerusalem, and, and the Yom Kippur War is a very uh, significant thing in my family. Uh, my, my father was posted in the Sinai, Sinai Desert uh, in the front, where uh, very few Israeli soldiers were facing the big uh, Egyptian army. And like, and they they had no chance that day. Uh, I suppose it's forty forty three years ago. Yes, seven. No, forty seven years ago. Yeah. Um, and so my my father became a war prisoner in in Egypt. Uh, uh, for a while, it was a very hard time in my family's life, and we're still living this trauma. I was I wasn't born then, but. My family is still living through this, that trauma, uh, and the men there who were captured had, like, yeah, they suffered a lot. In in a weird way, there are some 
parallel lines uh, between the story of Rabbi Amnon of Minz, who wrote Netanet Tokef, and the story of these men. Uh, my father was also pushed to convert while being in the prison there and refused, and uh, it was interesting to compare these stories. Um, Anyway, so yeah, so yeah, the Kibbutz Beta Shita, where the melody was written, suffered greatly, and 11 of, of their sons were uh, killed in the war. And I think it's interesting to bring this kind of like secular part of Israel with, with uh, our tradition, with the ancient Piyut. For me, it's hard to imagine what is Yom Kippur without that war. So I, I look at Yom Kippur from the, this perspective of my family. Uh, I'm going to transition to the piano to, to sing it. I, I'll take the microphone so you can hear. I hope you can see me. I just want to say that the, uh, Jonathan's going to be singing in Hebrew, and the words are on page 39, I believe, in the, um, what he's going to be singing is, I think, on page 39. Let me make sure I'm right about that. Uh, no, sorry, it's 37. Page 37, you have the words both in Hebrew and in English, and you'll see when he, you'll see when he sings that the, the melody has several parts to it. It kind of shifts every now and then. So that might be a way for you to, um, for you, if you can't read the Hebrew, it might be a way for you to kind of guess where, where he is in the song. It, it's on pages 38 and 39. It, Okay. Um, we have a kasha maestro. Unatane tokef kdushat ayom ki hu nora vayom ubo tinase malchutecha. ויקון בחסד כסאך ותשב עליו באמת ותשב עליו באמת אמת כי אתה הוא דיין ומוכיח ויודע ועד וכותב וחותם וסופר ומונה ותזכור כל הנשכחות, ותפתח את ספר הזיכרונות, ומאליו יקרא וחותם כל יד אדם בו, ובשופר גדול ייתקע. וכל דממה דקה יישמע, ומלאכים יחפזו, וכאילו רעדה יאחזו, ומלאכים יחפזו, וכאילו רעדה יאחזו. ויאמרו הנה יום הדין לפקוד על צבא מרום בדין כי לא יזכו בעיניך בדין. וכל באי עולם יעברו לפניך כבני מרון כבקרת רועי עדרו מעביר צאנו תחת שבטו וכל באי עולם יעברו לפניך כבני מרון, כבקרת רועי עדרו, מעביר צאנו תחת שבטו. כן תעביר ותספור ותמנה ותפקוד נפש כל חי, ותחתוך קצבה לכל בריאה, ותכתוב את גזר דינה. ושופר גדול ייתקע, 
וכל דממה דקה יישמע. ומלאכים יחפזו, וכאילו רעדה יאחזו. ומלאכים יחפזו, וכאילו רעדה יאחזו. בראש השנה ייכתבו ובצום יום כיפור יחתמו. כמה יעברון וכמה יברעון, מי יחיה ומי ימות, מי בקיצו ומי לא בקיצו. מי במים ומי באש, מי בחרב ומי בחיה, מי ברעב ומי בצמא, מי ברעש ומי במגפה, מי בחניקה ומי בסקילה, מי ינוח ומי ינוע. מי ישקט ומי יטורף, מי ישלב ומי יתייסר, מי יעני ומי יעשיר. ותשובה ותפילה וצדקה, מעבירין את רוע הגזרה. אמת כי אתה הוא יוצרם ויודע יצרם כי הם בשר ודם. אדם יסודו מעפר וסופו לעפר. משול כחרס הנשבר ככה ציר יבש וחציץ נופל, וחצל עובר, וכענן כלה, וכרוח נושבת, וכאבק פורה. החלום I can say just um, another part of the story is in these, in these years, in 73, Leonard Cohen came to Israel to, to sing to the soldiers. They, they're in the Sinai Desert, and I, I, I think that's when he wrote uh, Who, by, Who by Fire, which is also part of this, this prayer. It, it stay, the, the lyrics are taken uh, from the Netanet Tokef, so it's... Yeah. He also wrote, lover, 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 come back to me on these hills. That I heard, yeah. Jonathan, <laughs> uh, Personally, I've never heard it like I just heard it. Thank you. Kachalom ya'uf, the last words. Kachalom ya'uf, human beings. We are like a dream that flies by. I think this is the moment for all of us to say, may we be inscribed in the book of life. Why don't you guys speak those words to yourselves? May we be inscribed to the book of life.
Normally, we would be going to uh, uh, Vinu Malkeinu, but it's Shabbat, and it's kind of too mournful for Shabbat. On Shabbat, we got to stay positive. <laughs> oh, we get to stay positive. And uh, so tomorrow, those of you who can make it to Tashlich or who are going to be joining us virtually, um, we'll be singing it there. But today we're going to skip it. And we're going to go straight into another thing that we're not supposed to be doing on Shabbat, which is on Shabbat, we're also not allowed to hear the shofar. We're not allowed to blow the shofar, which is an interesting thing to contemplate. Why is that? Why is that that we're not allowed to? Um, I can get behind the Avinu Malkeinu and the mourning and the sadness and the sin language, but uh, uh, but the shofar is an uplifting thing. But, so I'm not sure the answer to that. Maybe you guys can tell me tomorrow. Um, but um, but we're going to cheat a little bit. And this is this is uh, this is the way in which we're going to cheat um, on at the new shul. Right on a, on Shabbat, you're not supposed to play musical instruments either. Neither, I guess, are you supposed to be on Zoom. Um, so <laughs> I think we're I think we're covering a lot of a lot of stuff we're not supposed to. But we're going to keep to the shofar. That we're not going to blow the shofar today. What we will do, though, uh, since we do play musical instruments at the new shul on Shabbat is I asked Frank London, um, who's going to be joining, uh, joining us on Yom Kippur, to record for us a few um, riffs on the shofar. Yeah, uh, he's going to be riffing. I don't know. I haven't heard it yet, actually. But what I, here's what I told him. When we do the shofar service on Rosh Hashanah, there's three parts to it. Malchuyot, which means uh, kingdoms, and has to do with... Uh, I don't know, Ponet, Ponet, Jim, what is, what's Malchuyot about? It's, there's, there's three parts. There's Malchuyot, Zichronot, Shofarot, kingdoms, memories, and shofars. Uh, uh, Malchuyot is about um, this notion of sovereignty, of full control. It's, 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 uh, it's something that makes no sense in the world that we inhabit. Zichronot is about remembrance, which embraces all of reality back to creation and before. And uh, Shofrot is both redemption and war, um, embracing it all. So each of them is kind of all inclusive. Thank you. Um, uh, perfect. Um, so we're gonna listen to uh, what, a, what a master trumpet player does and we're gonna hear we're gonna hear the trumpet the trumpet instead of the shofar. Uh, Jonathan, when, whenever you're ready, you can put those on. Jonathan, we can't hear. Uh oh, he's muted. <laughs> Here he goes. No. Can I still not hear it? Yeah. 
Can you hear the shofar? Can you hear the shofar? Show for all. All right, Frank London. Yes, um, I guess not on the trumpet. <laughs> uh, I have never seen. Have you guys ever seen such a collection of shofars? <laughs> that was amazing. Um, incredible. Uh, I, I, I'm going to ask you to 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 uh, to repeat one one more line with me, okay? I'll say the words, and then you guys can say them. Hayom. Hayom. Harat. Harat. Olam. Today. Today. The world. The world. The world. Is conceived. Is conceived. conceived. One more time. Today the world is conceived. Today the world is conceived. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, and since the world is conceived today, um, we can also um, turn our attentions now to um, to those whose, uh, who, whose lifespan from conception to death has ended. And we're going to say the mourners, Kaddish. Um, uh, uh, Tante Sally, Erica's great aunt, passed away last night. Last night, we're thinking of her. Um, we're thinking of... Uh, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Uh, we're thinking about Matan's grandfather, Ira Rimmerman. And if you put any names in the chat right now, I'll speak, I'll speak them. Nikita Price, David Small, Sylvia Cohen, Alice Meyerson, Esfer Mishulovich, Judith Felsenfeld, Svetlana Rosette, Gerald Block, Herbert Sloat, Andy Glickson, Betty LaRoe, mm. Alfred Fate, Brianna Taylor, Joel Elkind, Carol. Pernica, Joseph Clare, and Martin Cohen, and Walter South, Carl Otto Lieberman, Chaim Shatan, Bill Steiner,
Richard Jackson. And Kralstein. Don Friedman. Juliet Siegel. Zeke Siegel. Marilyn Abrams. Ethel Gerberg. Tossi and Leon Aaron. Gert Hurwitz. Leah Feldberg. Solomon Feldberg. I'm thinking of my grandfather as well, whose yard site is two days from today, Lou Lendman. Too many whose names we don't know. בחייכון וביומכון ובחיי לכל בית ישראל, בעגלה ובזמן קריב, ואמרו אמן. יהי שמי רבה מבורך, לעולם ולעולמי עולמיה. יתברך וישתבח ויתפאר ויתרומם ויתנשא ויתהדר ויתעלה ויתהלל. שמי לקודשה יברכו לעילה, לעילה, מן כל ברכתה ושירתה, תושבחתה ונחמתה. דאמירן בעלמה, ואמרו, אמן. יהי שלמה רבה מן שמיא, וחיים עלינו ועל כל ישראל, ואמרו, אמן. עושה שלום במרומיו, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל ועל כל יושבי תבל, ואמרו, אמן. Gior, we are also thinking of. Okay. Um, thank you, everybody. Um, we just got a couple final orders of business here. Um, and uh, those include, we're going to start, we're going to do the Kiddush and the Motsi. Um, Adam Zucker is going to lead us in the Kiddush, and Natalie Cohen is going to lead us in the Motsi. Um, why don't we start with the Kiddush, then Amy Goldfarb has taken on some of the, uh, a piece at least, of the uh, Rosh Hashanah challenge of the new foods that represent the perfect blessings. And one of them has to do with bread. Uh, um, so let's, let's hear, let's, let's hear the, the Kiddush first from Adam, then we'll hear the blessings from Amy, and then we'll hear the Motzi from Natalie. Um, Adam, Bevakasha. Baruch Atarnai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Peri HaGafen Amen. Amen. Have you guys ever seen those, uh, there's these buses going around in Brooklyn that, that uh, when you read the Hebrew, it says, uh, it's like, it's the whole bus is plastered with these things that say, it's very important to say a loud amen after every time you hear a blessing. So that's what the bus has told me. So uh, yell out your amen next time. Um, <laughs> um, okay. Um, uh, Amy Goldfarb, are you here? Yes. Okay. We're listening. Okay. I didn't have time to cook or bake yet, so I found myself imagining where in the process of cooking and baking as things are becoming, I could pray for the things that are on my heart. So first, and this is inspired by Daniel Avila's translation of Ecclesiastes from the Portuguese in our Fibruta. And this blessing can be said while watching the steam pour from the pot of fat kugel noodles boiling on the stove. May we grow to know more intimately the mist of nothingnesses. May we find meaning in the everyday and lastingness in the fleeting, moving moments of our lives. May we attend to our breath 
and marvel at how something so fragile, invisible, and repetitive is the very basis of our lives. May we celebrate what we don't know, what we can't see, and may, and may we find comfort in knowing that you are everlasting. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> the second blessing is inspired by Holly's definition of new as ever becoming. This blessing can be said while watching the challah rise and ever become. May we all be ever aware that we are ever becoming. May we all seek to better know who we are, who we are becoming, and who we wish to become. May we be mindful of what we bring to each moment. May we pursue justice, peace, friendship, love, kindness, belonging, and security and dignity for everyone in this new year and beyond. Amen. 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 Let's talk. Amen. 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 Um, thank you. Um, all right, Natalie. Yep. So I don't know if I can share my screen, but I will show you this challah that was last night a perfectly beautiful rounded challah made by a local bakery here. Now it looks this is this is the parts we ate. Um, anyhow, there you go. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Hamotzi Lacha Min Haaretz. Amen. 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 It's fun yelling that one. Um, uh, what can I say? Thank you all for this really beautiful couple hours. This was really wonderful to spend it with you like this. Thank you. Thank you to everybody who participated. Um, everybody who spoke, everybody who shared, everybody who, who intended um, on the, on the, on the space that we created here together. Um, it's amazing how the, the virtual reality can actually be a reality. Um, so Shana Tova, I, I hope to see, uh, I hope to see you guys either in person or not, uh, tomorrow. It's four o'clock tomorrow, by the way, it's four o'clock at the pier. Um, uh, I forget which number, Susan, which number pier are we meeting at? It's Pier 45, which is at West 10th Street and the West Side Highway. Thank you. Um, and uh, just a little note here. Tomorrow, there's going to be a New York City-wide shofar blowing at exactly 4 p.m. We're going we're gonna to do that. Uh, we're going to blow shofar along with everybody else, but that means that we're going to start at 4 p.m. So please get there at a quarter to 4 p.m., okay? Um, and don't forget your, uh, uh, your breadcrumbs uh, for all the garbage we did this past year and your flowers for all the beauty we're going to do this year. Um, and that's, uh, that's all I got. So Dara by everybody. Jonathan, you want to end us with some, some kind of happy, uh, get, give, us, give us something to smile about. Shana Tova, everybody. Shana Tova. Shana Tova. Yeah, 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 yeah
Sweet year, everybody. Thank you. Sweetness and strength for all of us. Yes. Amen. 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 I never zoomed like this before. <laughs> You're an expert now. None of us have. We've never <laughs> had this experience before. Zoom can work. <laughs> and we can re-zoom. <laughs> 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 This, this was the most Amish Zoom I've ever been part of. <laughs> I mean, this was just beautiful. Every single part of it, including the Arkish. I love the Arkish. <laughs> but we miss Batman. Oh, he's, he's not, I can't with him today. I just can't. I quit on him. Well, but he saved a lot of people, so <laughs> he's so <laughs> He works in mysterious ways. <laughs> Ellen, I love how you sang like that on the fly. That was really awesome. Oh, uh, somebody gave me a little something because <laughs> I didn't warm up. I haven't warmed nothing. So, but you know what? It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> that was really kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. You sit at home and sing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I don't know if the Zoom will work for Kol Nidre next week, but I did Kol Nidre, living room Kol Nidre is just sort of like a little sit in your chair and do monologue. It'll work next week, Ellen, I promise. <laughs> as long as Daniel is sitting beside you, I'm sure it'll work. I'm sorry. It'll work. With Danielle sitting beside me, everything works. Uh. I just want to thank Misha and welcome you. Yes. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Misha, <laughs> the warmth, the warmth that you so beautiful. led us with. Your heart is just jumps right across the screen and and you know welcome. Just welcome. <laughs> Thank you. We are very proud in Montreal. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Montreal. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, Love to you all. We gather again soon. Yes, we are. <laughs> Wonderful. Shana Welcome. We have Shana to have you in Israel, too. Great. Yeah, you look like a ninja right now. You look ready to, you know. 
just put your mask on and <laughs> take on Batman. <laughs> uh, we don't want to leave. Nobody wants to leave. It was just. And I'm leaving. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll reconvene. We'll resume. We'll, we'll see you tomorrow. Tanatova. Uh, Thank you, Rabbi Risha. Thank you, for thank you, everyone. Jonathan, thank you, and Jonathan, everybody. You. Be well. Bye. Bye. Look at him. Yep. Wild. <laughs> Yeah, this is yours? Yeah. Is this your computer? Yep. You have to. Shana Tova, Renee. <laughs> saying, oh, Shana Tova. <laughs> Great to see both of you. And I loved your, your barhu. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was nice seeing you too. All right. To a sweet year. To a sweet year. Hello. Be well, Shanatova, Renee. Thank you for doing us that honor. Jonathan, for everything. Susan, your words were beautiful. Amy, everyone, thank you. Thanks, Jonathan. Thanks to you, Susan. Here. <laughs> Here's Jonathan. Here's Jonathan. <laughs> Keeping it all together. Thank you. <laughs> you delivered that incredibly beautifully. And you it just, I, I heard it anew as you spoke. Oh. Big, big hugs, everybody. Shana Tova, Ilana. Oh, Amy. <laughs> we'll talk soon. Okay, good. <laughs> Shana Tova, Susan. Shana Tova, thank you, Amy. Shana Tova, Susan.